One of the most important things we can do to ensure the stability, longevity, reduce the chances of cracking and other structural problems in our guitars, both while we're building and long after we've sent them out to their new homes, is to carefully manage and maintain the relative humidity of the guitar shop. In this video, we're gonna talk about humidifiers, dehumidifiers, the different kinds, which ones I use and recommend, and a lot more. mentioned in the intro, maintaining the correct relative humidity in the atmosphere of your guitar shop is absolutely vital to building stable guitars and reducing any kind of issues that you might run into during the building or later on. Uh, it's important to state that. Okay, so before we jump into the section about the different humidifiers, dehumidifiers, and things like that, um, let me just talk for one second about why this is so important, just in case anybody's watching this and isn't familiar very much with the topic of relative humidity and stuff like that. So the bottom line is that wood is constantly absorbing or losing moisture relative to whatever environment it's in. So if wood is in a more humid environment, it's going to absorb moisture, it's going to expand. If it's in a drier environment, it's going to lose moisture, it's going to contract. Now, the reason why this is so important is because if we are not paying attention to our guitar shop relative humidity, we're going to, or we could potentially run into a situation where we build a guitar, for example, that is and has a lot of moisture. And then after we deliver that guitar to somebody, they could be in an environment with very little moisture and that wood is gonna to try to adjust itself. It's gonna shrink as it loses the moisture to adapt to its new environment, and that's when cracks occur and things like that. And the, the opposite is true as well. If we build it too dry, it can go to a very moist environment and can expand and have other types of structural problems uh, in that direction as well. So we want to maintain um, kind of a middle ground in our guitar shop with our humidification and dehumidification. And the general kind of rule of thumb that most people follow is about 50% relative humidity at about 72 degrees. And um, I tend to like sticking to, and I think this is common, a little bit on the lower side, so like 45% to 50%. And I'm, I don't, I'm not as rigid anymore as I used to be. I used to be really scared and I would really hold it exactly in this little band. Uh, but now if it goes a little bit over 50 or a little bit under 45, I, I'm okay, as long as it doesn't get extreme, you know? But right there in that little zone seems to be a good spot for me. And different luthiers may have different opinions on what works the best for them. So that is the, about the most basic way uh, to explain it and think about it. But there is much more to understanding humidity. If you really understand um, how the wood responds on a deeper level, for example, the wood doesn't just expand the same in all directions. It expands quite, dra actually very drastically differently um, in the different directions related to the grain direction. So how the wood is cut from the tree Depend, is gonna determine you know, how much it, is it gonna span, expand more across the grain or with the grain or lengthwise or whatever, it's all different. When you understand that, then you can apply that to more advanced things like uh, anticipating how the wood's gonna move when you put your water-based glue on it and things of that nature, and that's really fun. And we can't get into that in this video, of course, uh, but I do have a class that's part of the Luthier's Edge online guitar making school, which I'll link to below called Guitar Humidity Fundamentals and Advanced Applications. And uh, we go super deep into this topic. We talk about the wood starting from the cellular level, how it's behaving and what's going on, the different types of water. And then we, we move from that and build all the way to the advanced applications that many of which were, were huge breakthroughs for me and helped me really improve my work. So if you're interested in taking this to a deeper level, I highly encourage you to go check out that course. But for now, let's focus on the humidif humidifiers, dehumidifiers, and uh, we can start by just taking a look at the hygrometer. So before you start humidifying and dehumidifying, you'll need a way to gauge the, the progress or uh, measure where you're at in, in the shop and a, 
uh, hygrometer is the tool for that. And there are lots of different kinds, so I won't spend much time on this because many of them work well. This just happens to be my favorite. It's made by Accurite and um, pretty inexpensive. And I have about four, I think I have four of them here in the guitar shop spread out at different places so I can kind of monitor and just gives me a peace of mind knowing what's going on at the different spots in the shop. Because if you just have one and maybe it's really far away from your humidifier um, or it's very close to the humidifier, you could get a skewed uh, view of what's actually happening and what the wood is experiencing at different spots in the guitar shop as well. So that's important. A little side note. But anyway, I'll link to this and everything else below if you want to check it out. Um, the other thing that I highly recommend for measuring and just sort of tracking the progress on what's happening with the wood is a uh, moisture meter. This just has a couple of little prongs and you can um, stick this into the piece of wood in a place that's not seen, right? Just don't stick it in the middle of a guitar top or something because it does poke little holes in it. But when it goes in, it runs a little current through there and it uh, takes a reading of what the actual moisture content of the wood is. So how much moisture is actually in the wood, which is the real metric that we're trying to manage. Uh, we're just using the relative humidity as an easy way to affect the moisture content of the wood. Okay, so now that we've got that stuff out of the way, let's just start by, let's take a look at humid, humidifiers first. We'll look at humidifiers and uh, just talk a little bit about um, which one I use and why and kind of some of my experience that I went through in, uh, in coming to this place where I am now. Over the years, I've used three main types of humidifiers. The first type is a evaporative, the second one is a warm steam. And the third one, which I don't have here, and you'll understand why in a minute, is an ultrasonic. Now the ultrasonics are really cheap and seems like it would be a good thing, but it's actually a huge mess if you use one of those. And the reason why is because both the evaporative and the warm steam, they, they're evaporating, they're both evaporating just in different ways they're evaporating the water, which leaves behind the mineral content and any other uh, stuff that's in tap water that you don't want to, number one, be breathing in, and number two, that you don't want settling all over your workshop. So when I did get a uh, ultrasonic humidifier, uh, I used it one winter, and by the end of that winter, uh, I think it was near my joiner, and it had like a white sticky crust all over it. And what it essentially was, and so was part of my table saw, it was near my table saw as well. And the floor, the tools, all kinds of stuff was completely covered in mineral deposits that was left over because the ultrasonic humidifier is just, the little membrane is just sort of spraying an ultrafine mist out into the air, but it's not, since it's not evaporating, it's not leaving the bad stuff behind. It's just spraying all of it out. And so that bad stuff, the mineral content and everything is gonna get left all over whatever surface it happens to land on. And it can be hard to clean off and could potentially even ruin things if you have it near, uh, let's say your wood um, stacks or maybe even a guitar or something. So that was a lesson learned for me and hopefully you can avoid that one. Um, the evaporative humidifiers are cheaper than this type, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, they work pretty well. The number one lesson of that for me is clean, and this, is, this goes for both. Get yourself on a schedule and force yourself to clean them out regularly. Um, clean it, in this case, you'd just be changing the wick inside that wicks the, uh, the moisture up. Also, if you're using an evaporative one like this, um, you wanna use some kind of a humidistat, I think it's called, a bacteriostat, and that helps to make sure nothing gross starts living in there, and that's gonna affect your health. Um, obviously, if it starts to smell or something, then you need to take action and do something, but it does take some work to keep these running right. But I stopped using these at, at one particular point because the cold evaporated, evaporated moisture um, in a cold winter months like we have here where I live, uh, it just doesn't feel good. It feels cold and it's just not a good environment. Um, it's okay, it's fine. You can, you can hold that humidity up to the level you need it to, but uh, I just didn't like it. 
And so I eventually sw switched to what I've been using now for the last two or three years, which is a warm steam uh, humidifier. I'll get to this in a second, but before we move on from the evaporative one, I wanna mention um, some of them have a, a, a good uh, setting or like a good like sort of computer or whatever they're using to uh, electronic part to manage the humidity so you can like set it to a particular humidity level and it'll stay there. But I found that uh, that different brands have different, they're not all accurate, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So at one point I purchased a, a separate uh, little humidity level thing here. So this plugs into the wall and then the uh, humidifier plugs into this and then I can use this to more accurately set whatever humidity level I want it to stay at. And so, you know, this is sort of a guide anyway. We're going to use the hygrometers that we have around the shop to determine what's actually working. But um, this this worked well. So if you're, if you're in a situation where you, you only have access to one or you can only have the budget for one that doesn't have a reliable one of these, um, you can find these. I'll see if I can link to this, it's pretty old, but I'll see if they still have that as well. So let me get to what I'm using now and what I most recommend, which is this little unit here. Now my workshop is pretty small. This little one here actually does a pretty good job. This shop is fairly well insulated. Um, and I'd say that I'd maybe do a couple gallons, uh, one, one to one, one and a half to maybe two gallons of water per day goes into the air through this um, in the really, really cold um, time of the year. But um, the great thing about this is um, there's, a, there's a few things I love about it and why I'll continue using it. And if I ever move to another shop, I'll either get a bigger one, probably by the same company or just multiple different uh, humidifiers like this. But the, when it, so this one actually boils the water and creates a boiled kind of a steam. So it's a warm steam and it just feels so much better when you come into your workshop in the morning and it's just, it's just a more pleasant place to be. And um, it just seemed to be much better. It's been better for me. I haven't felt like when I had this all the time with the cold evaporation, I didn't, you know, a lot of times my sinuses would start feeling weird and things. It just never made me feel very healthy, but this is a totally different ball game. It's really great. The other cool thing is it has an app that's uh, for iPhone and it can tell you when it's time to clean it. Um, it has little uh, discs that you put in to help absorb the left behind minerals and stuff from the tap water, which is great. And then it has little pouches where the cleaning process, uh, it's very simple, it's just a couple steps. You dissolve this stuff into a cup of hot water and you pour it in there and then you push a button and it runs through a cleaning process. It's really great. So I, I can't recommend this enough. It is more expensive for sure, um, but man, it's been a huge upgrade to this. I'll never use this kind again if I can avoid it and I'll definitely never use the uh, ultrasonic type, that's for sure. The last but not least uh, component here of managing this uh, atmosphere in the workshop is the dehumidifier. Um, this is the one that I've settled on currently. I've been using this for about three years. It's my favorite that I've had so far. In all these years, I've probably gone through, I'd say at least four or maybe five dehumidifiers because they're, the dust that we make when we're making guitars it just gets in there and destroys them and it's really difficult. So there's a couple of little tips and tricks um, and one specific aspect of this particular one, which has made it last much longer. And even after three years, this one's still in great shape. I expect to get quite a few more years out of it actually, because I finally woke up and realized what I'm about to tell you. Okay, so a little story behind this one. Um, there, there are two types, there, there's less, differences in dehumidifiers than there are in humidifiers like we talked about. So the dehumidifiers are working about the same way, but there's one main difference and that is that some of them have a fan that turns on only while the unit is running, only while it's actually actively trying to remove the humidity from the atmosphere. And there's another type that has a continuous fan that just runs 24 seven and it never stops, whether the, whether the compressor's on trying to make it remove the moisture or not. I always avoided the kind that had a continuous fan because I thought that it would just, uh, that it would be a problem and that it would just pull more dust into it and things like that. 
but I accidentally bought this one not knowing that it was a continuously running fan. When I first got it, I was really disappointed and I thought, oh, should I take it back? And so I thought, well, I'll just try it. And what ended up happening is it just does a way better job at evenly, uh, it just circulates air. So like all night long while it's running, it's circulating the air through the shop, it's moving all over the place and it just keeps everything much more balanced. And, and I think at the same time, it's the continuous airflow I think is helping to uh, prevent a lot of settling of the dust and everything in the coils and stuff as well. Um, so I highly recommend the kind that runs continuously with one main point though. And that is that when I come down to the shop in the morning, um, if I'm gonna be doing any sanding or anything really dusty, which is many times of, uh, that happens, I turn it off. And some days I just turn it off when I, show, when I get into the workshop in the morning and then I turn it back on when I leave. Um, and it's just off during my work day. Um, the continuous fan helps to remind me when it's on and off, which is kind of nice because I can actually hear that it's on or off. But uh, it's just, it's been really great to do that. Um, it seems like there was something else I was gonna say too. Um, the, the other important thing I guess is that you do need to clean it. So what I try to do is I try to start with a vacuum. You can open up the back of this particular LG one, which I'll link to uh, in the description. But um, you don't, it doesn't have to be this one, but I'm, with the humidifiers too, I'm trying to lay this out in a way that you can find one that works for you. You don't have to buy the specific one that I'm using, but you know why it works uh, or why I like it why it's worked well for me. Um, the back opens up on this and I can vacuum the coils. So you let it dry overnight, get it good and dry, vacuum the coils, and then just take some soft compressed air and you can blow it out. And if you do that uh, even once a month, along with the other practices of trying to remember to turn it off during your really dust making uh, things that you're doing on your guitars, um, can really extend it. Um, but I just love having that continuous fan. I think it's really, um, great. I would never get one without it now because I love the way it's continuously circulating that air and making sure that the air throughout the whole shop is more even and there isn't just a big cloud of dryness hanging in one particular area near this thing. So uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it with the dehumidifiers. So I hope that gives you some more background and insight and sort of makes the process of deciding which humidifier, dehumidifier, uh, is gonna work best for you in your particular space and um, your budget and things like that. And I wanna encourage you also that if, if you haven't yet, look deeper, dig deeper into this topic of humidity, of the moisture content of the wood, of the more technical things about how the wood cells hold water and what kinds of water, um, the hygroscopic nature of the wood, the EMC, um, like, the, and what I'm really getting at is it's the personality, it's understanding the main material that we use to make our guitars, which is wood. And like, how does it behave and how's it gonna react? Because once you really get that into your sort of, uh, you know, in your guts where you just know your intuition, um, it's, it just opens up a new world. And it was an aha moment for me. It was a breakthrough for me when I finally realized this. And of course, I have a class over on the Luthier's Edge that I mentioned before. Uh, I really encourage you to go check it out, take a look at it. And um, there's, there's just a lot there. There's a lot of richness that I think so many people are missing. And it seems like this sort of basic topic, but like most basics, um, they are the real key to making big strides forwards. You know, I've, I've talked about before, and you've probably seen other people online talking about the important uh, the importance of the basics, of the fundamentals, you know, like a runner is going to work on his fundamentals in order to improve. Yeah, sure, you can get some better shoes and you can get, you know, some different tips and tricks, but the basics or the mastering the basics is the road to mastering your craft, is all I'm saying. And humidity is one of those things. So. I'm not gonna say more about it, but I will put the link in the description if you wanna go check out the Luthier's Edge course, and um, I think you'll find it interesting. All right, so that's it for this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, hope you'll consider doing that. Hit the like button, it really does help uh, in the algorithms and things of that nature, and um, hope you found it helpful. I'll see you next time.